To be completely honest, I'm not sure how old I was when it happened. All I remember about that day is going to McDonald's to get fries and ice cream with my mom and dad like we had so many times before. Little did we know that while we were at McDonald's for those 15 to 20 minutes, my life was being altered forever along with my brothers. My brother and his best friends had been on their way home from visiting one of their childhood friends that was in prison. My brother's friend Jesus was driving, his friend Kyle was sitting in the passenger seat, and my brother was sitting in the back seat along with his best friend Jennifer. They don't remember much after that. They were all laughing and having a fun time, they say. The next memory my brother has is waking up in the grass. It was 3.15 in the afternoon, sirens were screaming, people were yelling, and he had no recollection of what had just happened. The driver had been unable to make a right turn correctly in the road ahead and had driven into the center divider, causing the car to overturn. My brother was ejected from the car, and so was Jennifer. The only difference in their stories, however, is that my brother survived. In a flash, their childhood best friend was gone. Jennifer Parker was her name. She had known the boys in the car with her almost her entire life. However, the boys would never get the chance to talk to her, hear her laugh, or ever get to see her again. Days later, I remember seeing photos of her everywhere. She had been homecoming queen, a member of drill team, and a young charismatic girl who had just graduated high school. But now, photos were the only things left to remember her by. It's strange that although I was so young, this is one of the clearest memories I have. When I was in fourth grade, my biggest worry should have been learning my multiplication tables or reading one million words. However, at this time, the first man I ever loved and considered my hero was diagnosed with cancer. It happened so fast that before I could even stop to comprehend what was really going on, in just a few months' time, he passed away. I still remember walking to school that day, just like I had so many times before unknowing that the five seconds I talked to my dad before sprinting out the door for school would be the last words I would ever say to him. In a flash, just like Jennifer, my father was gone. In preparation for his funeral, only a few days later, we made cardboard trifolds full of pictures of my father. These pictures did not only portray my father's life as he was growing up, but also portrayed his life with our family. While making them, I found myself in a panic, scouring through pictures. No, 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 I found myself thinking. There weren't any pictures of me and my father together. Until I found one, a random one at that, taken at my cousin's swim meet. The sad part, however, is that this picture wasn't even recent. It had been taken a couple years before my father died. Photos were the only things I had to remember him by, and I didn't have something recent to look back to. This photo breaks my heart. Not only because it was the last photograph I had with my father, but because I knew I had always taken my dad for granted. I had expected to always have him around, watching me go into high school and graduate, and having him walk me down the aisle one day. The harsh truth, however, is that life is unpredictable and you never know what's going to be thrown at you next. You should never take what you have for granted because the moment you realize you have, it could already be too late. I have learned the hard way that in a flash, everything can change, just like it did with Jennifer and my father. At such a young age, this harsh truth was forced upon me without a choice. And as I have grown up into the person I am today, I have realized that you never know what could happen tomorrow. You hear me talk about all the memories I have with my friends because I cherish these little moments of pure innocent happiness. Because in a flash, a simple photograph taken at a football game or even a swim meet could be the very last thing you have to hold on to. Cherish the little moments before you find yourself regretting all the times you took them for granted. Because there is no such thing as perfect and nothing lasts forever. It's the oldest story in the world. One day you're 17 and planning for someday. 
and then quietly, and without you really noticing, some day is today, and then some day is yesterday, and this is your life. If you had a friend you knew you'd never see again, what would you say? If you could do one last thing for someone you love, what would it be? Say it, do it, don't wait. Nothing lasts forever. Step up and look around you. Notice everything in your everyday life and realize every little thing you have already taken for granted. A simple gesture, a simple photograph, a simple moment could change tomorrow. Because although you plan for tomorrow, tomorrow may never come. This, I believe.